continue with the uh, descent. But more critically, let me also, on behalf of my colleagues, thank profusely the motorists, especially drivers of long distance trucks, who in solidarity with the Kenyan people about their suffering have kept off the highways, the major highways in this country since yesterday morning, in fact since Tuesday evening. It's an encouragement that they have realized that Kenyans cannot uh, continue the life as usual. But now, to the graver issue, we have noted with utmost concern <coughs> the unprecedented level of police brutality targeted at innocent, peaceful, and armed Kenyan citizens. In fact, we are worried that there could have been instruction to the police to carry out what I would term as execution of citizens in broad daylight. We have seen them. There are videos doing the rounds all over of police or people masquerading as police because some of them are in civilian clothes. Killing Kenyans in broad daylight. In broad daylight. It is something that has never been witnessed. Even in the most dictatorial states and systems. It reminds us of the happenings in Cambodia. Under the late dictator. Pol Pot. I'm sure you know, those of you who have read history. So this police, police brutality is alarming, to say the least. And we want the international community and international agencies, especially the United Nations Human Rights Office, to not only comment on these matters regularly, but also to take serious note of these happenings with a view to holding to account the perpetrators of these heinous crimes. But in the same vein, we are asking formally the Director of Public Prosecution to exercise their constitutional mandate and carry out impartial, independent, and speed investigations into these matters with a view to apprehending the perpetrators and charging them. But in the event that that, that that doesn't happen, as most, like, most likely it won't, we are asking the ICC to take a keener interest in the Kenyan situation. In the Kenyan situation. Because what we are witnessing is basically crimes against humanity. And in fact, genocide in the making. Because these attacks, first of all, are permitted. They are planned. But more ominously, they are targeted at specific sections of the population, which are clear ingredients of international crime, or crime against humanity. So we shall be, of course, we shall be releasing a more detailed statement on this issue in the coming days. The third issue is the matter of the unlawful, unconstitutional arrest and abductions of Kenyans, including leaders who are elected, <coughs> like my brother Babu Owino, the MP for Mbakasi East, and Ken Chonga, MP for Kilifi South. The Speaker of the County Assembly of Cliffy, Honorable Butedi Mambiri, and many others across the country. Honorable Babu, for instance, called me at around midnight on Tuesday that I am at the airport and have been arrested. 
few minutes later, I tried to call him back. I couldn't get him up to now. I've not been able to reach uh, Honorable Baba Win on phone. And his whereabouts are unknown. And his wife has been all over police stations in Nairobi and in the neighborhood. We are also aware of the arrest, indeed abduction, of Mr. Maina Njenga and a few of his colleagues. The issue is this. If the police have a case against somebody, why don't you summon them? Or simply arrest them in a civil manner, take them to the police station, book them, prepare the charge sheet, produce them in court, and argue your case, or prosecute your case. In any case, it is against the Constitution, clear provisions of the Constitution, to hold any person, not just an MP, any person, for more than 24 hours without producing them in court. It's the first time this is happening since the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution. It's the first time we are witnessing a scenario where the police or people masquerading as the police can hold a Kenyan for more than 24 hours in communicado to make it worse. So we're also calling upon the international community to take note of these atrocities, of these happenings. Finally, we are hoping that they will end well across the country. But tomorrow again we are back. Kenyans will be back to demonstrate against all these legal uh, proposals and the legal practices by the regime. From here, today, I think at around 3 p.m., Kenyans will be converging at Central Park in Nairobi, you know, where it is. At around 3 p.m., Kenyans will be converging at the Central Park in the Nairobi CBD to continue with the protests and demonstrations. And we call upon the police to provide security to both the demonstrators and the general public. Security to the peaceful demonstrators and the general public. We commit that we shall continue to remain peaceful throughout, <coughs> whether provoked or not. We want to appeal to our brothers and sisters in the National Police Service to also understand that what we are doing is basically also to their benefit. Kenyans who are turning up in their numbers to agitate are simply doing so on behalf of themselves and on behalf of every other Kenyan, including the police officers. So thank you very much. I'll be calling upon my colleagues to ship in. Addressed uh, all the issues that we wanted to address this afternoon. I can only add and say that uh, Kenya Kwanza regime promised that in order to deal with uh, Azimio, they were going to suspend the constitution of Kenya. And indeed, the events of the last days, the last few days, have demonstrated that indeed Kenya Kwanza has suspended the constitution. We have seen the illegal abductions of leaders. We have seen the heightened police brutality. We have seen even the illegal implementation of the Finance Act, which is before court. We have evidence that though the matter is in court, this rogue regime has gone ahead and is quietly implementing the Finance, Bill, uh, Finance Act. We have also seen that the right to assemble has been violated. The right to picket has been violated. And we have all seen even the shootings of innocent Kenyans. We saw a young boy, an innocent boy, who was not even demonstrating being shot in the leg. We have seen a rogue policeman in plain cloth shooting an innocent Kenyan. We are asking the international community to note the violation of human rights in this country. 
we are asking the media to take keen interest in the violation of human rights in this country. And we are asking Kenyans not to tie up. Come out. The collection of signature is ongoing. What is happening should actually inform many Kenyans to go to the tumechoka.net and post their signatures, sign in solidarity with the Kenyans who want progress because we cannot allow this country to descend to the old Kanu days. We know those who are in power have never been for reforms. Those who are in power are the ones who are beating the people who brought second liberation in this country and they are back. We should not allow them to take us back to the old dark days when every Kenyan leaders were terrorized, were tortured. They took away our security illegally so that they can abduct us. We are not going to be silenced, Mr. Ruto. We are not going to be silenced, Mr. Gashagwa. Kenya is ours and Kenya is Marwa. Thank you. Basi mimi kama mama nitasema kwamba ninaomba amani. Kwa maana kunapokuwa na machafuko ya kisiasa ama kwa jamii wanaoumia saidi ni kina mama na watoto. Hakika kufikia hapo tumeona kwamba wa Kenya kina mama, vijana, watoto, wazee wanateseka kwa uongozi wa dhuluma, kwa uongozi wa kukosa haki za kibinadamu kwa uongozi usiostahili kwa karne hii. Kwa hivyo mimi naomba serikali iliyoko ambao si halali waachane na wakenya waishi kwa amani. Na kwa hakika ninaomba kwa kweli hii Kenya kama walioko kwa serikali ya Kenya kuisha wanataka kuendelea. Mukiwa wa Kenya wote waishe mtaongoza nani? Tukifa wote mtaongoza nani? Kwa hivyo ninaomba askari polisi na wanaotumika hata kama si askari halisi tafadhalini komesheni fifo za wa Kenya tumechoka na ni lazima hii serikali iondoke mamlakani Kenya isonge mbele asante want to add is uh, first of all to thank uh, members of the media for the very good work you're doing to cover these demonstrations under very difficult circumstances. We have seen a trend where the government has decided now to have plainclothes police officers camouflaged in different uh, formations. Yesterday in Madare constituency, you saw there was one person who was shot in the leg, peaceful and unarmed. <laughs> You also saw a person who was protesting that his child had been choked by tear gas that had been lobbed into their informal settlement in their houses. There was a person camouflaging and masquerading as a member of the media who abducted that person and that person to this place or this time is incommunicado. So we asked the media also, even as they were covering yesterday, you remember to please cover in your item in particular, citizen, there were things that happened in Marare and they were reported as things happening somewhere. Nobody knows where they were. These were incidences happening in Madare, and we want to ask you to be very specific so that the people of Madare can also get their justice. There are people who have died. There are people who have been shot. There are colleagues of ours who have been arrested. And the only conclusion you can make is that there is a clear command structure. That command structure began with a meeting in State House. A meeting in State House that was clearly giving directions to members of parliament to retreat to their constituencies. We have information that each of them was funded to the tune of 250,000 and their MCAs as well. You have seen a member of parliament as a result of that direct instruction from State House wielding a gun in Kisi, in, uh, yeah? in, Nakuru. in Nakuru, 
in complete violation of the Constitution. Obviously, this member of parliament misread Article 37. While our people are peaceful, this member of parliament forgot to read that part of the act that says peaceful and unarmed. Show me which members of our protesters and the Kenyan people were armed yesterday. You have seen that the hooliganism that is being meted is being meted by state-sponsored mercenaries. 